Okay, uh, this is lecture number 16, and we're on Revelation 15. I already read verses 5 to 8 about the temple in heaven. This is, uh, the Greek word is naos, which is the sanctuary of the, the holy portion of the temple, the holy place and the holy of holies, not hieron, which would be the entire temple. Uh, but the tabernacle was the portable temple that the Jews had in the wilderness during the time of Moses. And it wasn't until Solomon where they built the stationary temple. But the portable tab uh, tab tabernacle was built, patterned after the heavenly one. Uh, and uh, it was referred to as the tabernacle of the testimony. Uh, the Ten Commandments was placed on the, the, the tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments on it were placed in the Ark of the Testament, the Ark of the Covenant, in the Holy of Holies. Uh, but the Holy of Holies here is open, so the curtain is parted, uh, and the seven angels with the seven plagues come out of the Holy of Holies. Uh, now the Holy of Holies in the temple and also in the tabernacle the high priest, he was the only one allowed to go in there, and that was only once a year on uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, to offer a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Uh, but the seven uh, angels there uh, come out of the temple clothed in linen, clean and bright, so they have on uh, bright linen, speaking of uh, righteousness throughout the book of Revelation. It speaks about that. Uh, they're they're wearing golden girdles, which is something that the high priest himself wore. So apparently, uh, the, they're performing works very similar to the, the works of a, of a high priest, of a Jewish high priest. Of course, Jesus Christ himself is the ultimate high priest, according to the book of Hebrews. Uh, but the golden girdles, uh, it, apparently, uh, the... the the gold, it may have something to do with God's glory reflected on these angels, just the, the bright and clean linen as well, the righteousness there. Uh, but the seven uh, plagues are going to proceed from these seven angels, and these guys are coming from the Holy of Holies, so it seems to symbolize the fact that the seven plagues proceed from the holiness of God. So uh, because God is a holy God, uh, God's judgments are just no matter how severe they may be and his judgment will be poured upon the uh, sinful humanity uh, and we rightfully deserve uh, these judgments to be poured upon us and the only way we can be spared is through trusting in Jesus Christ for salvation uh, one of the four living creatures says in verse 7 of Revelation chapter 15 uh, gives the seven bowls of God's wrath and seven angels. Now, this, the four living creatures that are mentioned in Revelation 4 6, we said they might be angels. It's tough to say, tough to figure out. But he gives God's wrath to the uh, seven angels, and God is referred to as the one who lives forever and ever, uh, though he does share this life, his eternal life, with, with his followers. He is life. Uh, but we receive a share in his life. Now the temple filled with smoke, verse 8, uh, from God's glory and power were told, and no one is able to enter the temple until the seven plagues uh, were finished. And that's going to be referred to in Revelation chapter 16, the seven plagues. Uh, God's holiness is being manifest, and uh, we need to recognize, you know, Jesus is our Savior. Uh, Jesus is our friend. Uh, but we need to recognize our God is a holy God. We serve a holy God. We must never ever downplay uh, God's holiness. Now, Revelation chapter 16, uh, verses 1 to 21, the entire chapter speak about the uh, seven bowls of God's judgment. And uh, I believe, I hold it a position, as I mentioned earlier, that these plagues occur rapidly right before Christ's return. 
in uh, Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31, we have the second coming of Christ immediately after the tribulation period when certain signs occur. The sun darkened, the moon not given its light, the stars falling from the sky. Well, with the sixth seal in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 to 17, uh, you have those same signs. So we know the sixth seal occurs after the tribulation period. Well, the seventh seal, some of the occurrences uh, that are recorded there are in uh, Revelation 8, uh, 1 to 5, are identical. The earthquake, the hailstones, the uh, uh, peals of the, the lightning and the thunder, they're identical with the seventh trumpet of Revelation 11, 15 to 19, which also records the second coming of Christ, and the seventh plague, Revelation 16, verses 17 to 21. So, it appears that at least the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, and the seventh plague all occur simultaneously. Uh, but from there on, it's hard to figure out where we place these. But I would put the seven bowls of wrath uh, immediately after the tribulation period uh, since in Revelation chapter 6, 12 and 17 the sixth seal when the sun is dark and the moon doesn't get light the stars fall from the sky the powers of the heavens are shaken then everyone knows the wrath of the Lamb has come and, uh, and these bowls are the seven bowls of God's wrath uh, but apparently God commands the seven angels to pour out the seven bowls uh, of, of God's wrath uh, upon the earth. So take a look now at uh, verse 1 here. We have God commanding the seven angels to pour out the seven bowls of His wrath upon the earth. Uh, Revelation 16, verse 1, And I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of the wrath of God into the earth. Now the first bowl is mentioned in verse 2. And the first angel went and poured out his bowl into the earth and it became a loathsome and malignant sore upon the men who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. So the first bowl is a loathsome and malignant sore, but it's only upon those who take the mark of the beast and worship the beast. Uh, it's similar to the judgment on the Egyptians found in Exodus chapter 9, verses 9 to 11. Uh, one of the ten plagues there brought upon the Egyptians uh, in, uh, as God was getting Pharaoh to break down and finally let the uh, Israelite people go. Now keep in mind, this is in addition to eternal damnation that is promised to everyone who accepts the mark of the beast in Revelation 14, verses 9 to 11. So. Uh, by the way, uh, all kinds of diseases, and some of them are really horrible with some really malignant and loathsome sores. Uh, even besides AIDS, there's many, many different diseases that are, that are coming up as we uh, may be approaching the last days. The second bowl in verse 3. And the second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood like that of a dead man. And everything in the sea died. So the second bowl, the sea becomes blood. Now, is, is this literal? Does it literally become blood, or does it just take on the color of blood? Is it literal or symbolic? We don't know for sure, but uh, God certainly can do it. Uh, this was a lot like what was it, the Nile that became blood in the Book of Exodus, one of the ten bowls, uh, one of the ten plates there. But the sea becomes blood. All sea life dies, and. Uh, now the second trumpet, Revelation 8, 8, only one third of C uh, becomes blood. So uh, we know that the second bowl is after the second trumpet, but I would place all seven bowls uh, right about the time of the seventh uh, uh, trumpet. Uh, but where it talks about sea life, it could be either just the Mediterranean Sea, so whenever the Great Sea or Sea is mentioned, usually refers to the Mediterranean Sea, or it could talk about all salt water, which would be all oceans and uh, and all seas. On uh, the third bowl, verses four to seven, uh, 
And the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, Righteous art thou who art and who was, O holy one, because thou didst judge these things. For they poured out the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. They deserved it. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And so the third bowl here in verses 4 to 7, the rivers and springs become blood. And uh, of course we already mentioned Exodus 7 verses 20 to 21, the Nile River and in the book of Exodus, one of the plagues, ten plagues, where the Nile River became blood. Proclamation of the angel of the waters and the altar that God is righteous in his judgment. That the worshippers of the beast had shed the blood of the saints and now God gives them what they deserve and that is blood to drink. Uh, the uh, third trumpet now, that was in Revelation 8, verses 10 to 11, only one third of the river and spring water became bitter. But now we see that they're uh, entirely uh Whereas before it was only one third, now it's uh, completely all all the uh, rivers and spring water. Uh, the fourth bowl, verses eight and nine. Uh, by the way, uh, Revelation six, verses nine to eleven, talks about the martyrs, and they're saying, "How long, O oh, oh God, before you judge those who have persecuted us?" and uh, now we see here that you know God is righteous in his judgment because the worshippers of the beast they shed the blood of the saints but now God gives them what they deserve blood to drink the fourth bowl verses 8 and 9 of Revelation 16 and the fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun and it was given to it to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with fierce heat and they blasphemed the name of God who had the power over those over these plagues, and they did not repent so as to give him glory. And uh, so the sun scorches men with fire. Uh, it could be, possibly, you know, it could could be that God just intensifies the sun or moves it a little closer to the earth. Then it could again it could be destruction of the ozone layer, possibly due to nuclear warfare. Or, or what's that? Could be a solar flare around a, a solar flare, which would be what they they uh, if they a, a, a storm on the surface of the sun, they, they can reach several million miles, which would bring them quite a bit closer to Earth than the sun. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, and so far, there's nothing like that. It's nothing strong enough to hear. There there have been comments that were large enough to actually envelop the planet Mercury, which is the closest planet. Ah. So we wouldn't take much of a threat to get one big enough to come close enough to cause uh, no. the And then that is called against solar flares yeah. or solar comets. And what is this, what's the difference? The same thing? They're, they would have the same effect, but they're the, the physical is a little bit different. Okay. All right. And, uh, but, you know, it could be that uh, could be nuclear exchanges causing destruction to the ozone layer. And that type of thing. By the way, that that was probably why men lived to be so much older in the book of Genesis when they lived to be over 900 years old. You had 40 days and 40 nights worth of water, a water canopy surrounding the Earth's atmosphere, uh, filtering out more and more of the poisonous rays of the sun that the even the ozone layer couldn't filter, and that would greatly slow down the aging process of man. Uh, but like the Pharaoh of Egypt with the ten plagues the beast worshippers still did not repent and they continued to blaspheme God despite the intense heat and the burning from the sun the fifth bowl verses 10 and 11 and the fifth angel poured out his bowl upon the throne of the beast and his kingdom became darkened and they gnawed their tongues because of pain and they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. And so the fifth bowl of the beast throne becomes dark. Uh, again, when you look at the ten plagues that God poured out on Egypt, you had the darkness there in Exodus 
chapter 10, verses 21 to 23. Also, Matthew 24, verse 29, when Christ is returned, the sun is dark and the moon doesn't give us light and the stars fall from the sky, so it's going to be darkness, and so the two may be tied together. But the beast throne becomes darkened, and the beast worshippers gnaw their teeth due to pain. Still they did not repent, but they blasphemed God for their pains and their sores. Uh, these plays, again, I, I see them as occurring rapidly. Now, when we move ahead now, just a little recap. The first bowl, you got malignant sores on the beast worshippers. The second bowl, the sea becomes blood and all sea life dies. The third bowl, the rivers and springs become blood. And the fourth bowl, the sun scorches men. And the fifth bowl, the beast kingdom is darkened and there is pain. Uh, now we come to the sixth bowl, verses 12 to 16. The sixth bowl, verses 12 to 16. Verse 12, And the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river, the Euphrates, and his water was dried up, that the way might be prepared for the kings from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his garments, lest he walk about naked and men see his shame. And they gather them together to the place which in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Uh, the Euphrates River is dried up to clear uh, the path for the kings of the east. Uh, the uh, sixth trumpet, now remember, remember we were dealing with the sixth trumpet, the 200 million troops of Revelation 9, verses 13 to 19. We weren't really sure if the 200 million troops were demonic spirit beings or if they were actually the kings of the east that are referred to here, which would be a coalition of China, India, Japan, and the, the other nations to the east. Uh, there has been talk, too, about the building of dams in the Euphrates River that the Chinese wanted done just in case the, Soviet, the old Soviet Union was to invade the Middle East so they could march their troops through the Euphrates River and on into uh, the Middle East. Now, I, haven't, I haven't heard that. Can, what's that? How big is the Euphrates? You know, how far across? Uh, you got me. I really, really couldn't tell you. I know it's... A, it's extremely long. But. Yeah, that's a good point. Why is as far, far as halfway? Yeah, you know, he should run for political office with answers like that. Halfway, nothing. There you go. And, uh, okay, and uh, it, it, it sounds like a real uh, in, in, intelligent response to a question that you knew nothing about. The answer on that's good. That's a, a great political potential there. Uh, but anyway, the Euphrates River is dried up to make the way for the kings of the east. Now, the, the three spirits of the demons that are spoken of here is the, the false trinity that a lot of Bible scholars talk about. The dragon is Satan himself. The beast is the Antichrist. Uh, his demon comes from the abyss. Look at Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast that you saw was and is not is about to come up out of the abyss and to go to destruction. So the, the Antichrist is indwelt by a demon that comes up out of the abyss, the bottomless pig. Well, Satan's not there yet. And then the false prophet also is uh, possessed uh, by a demon. So uh, those who say the Antichrist is going to be possessed by Satan, I, you know, that's where his power comes from. And I would not doubt that Satan possesses him on several occasions, but primarily he is possessed by a demon that comes from the abyss, and Satan isn't going to be thrown into the abyss until after Christ returns. So the Antichrist and the false prophet will be possessed probably by uh, two of Satan's right-hand demons. Uh, and then, of course, uh, when Satan feels that he needs to, he'll probably possess them uh, as well. Uh, but they perform signs, false miracles, 
And these signs gathered the armies of the earth for the war of the great day of God. Uh, uh, polemos is the, is the Greek word for war, not just a battle. So it's, it's a war. A war is like a collection of battles. There's a lot of different campaigns. And uh, all the armies of the world gather at Armageddon. And uh, man, you know, mankind is trying to get peace on his own, but man fails to bring peace to earth. Isaiah 9 6 tells us that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. We need to look to Jesus for peace and not look to man or the United Nations. When the nations are united, that isn't going to bring peace, that's going to bring Armageddon. They're going to unite to try to wipe the Jews off the face of the earth. Daniel 9 26 tells us that even to the end there will be wars. So even a one world government might be. United Nations, if its goals are accomplished and they have their one world government, even a one world government will only increase war. Uh, the final war will cover an area of 200 miles, uh, according to Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. A 200 mile stretch is probably with the whole campaign. However, Armageddon will be the focal point, will be the main value. Uh, we get some more information uh, on this battle in uh, Zechariah chapter 14. Uh, yeah, let's take a little bit of time to read that. Zechariah 14 verses uh, 1 to 9. Behold, the day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be, will be divided among you. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city will be captured, the houses plundered, the woman ravished, and half of the city exiled, but the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. And in that day his people stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in its middle from east to west by a very large valley, so that half of the mountain will move toward the north and the other half toward the south. And you will flee by the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azel. Yes, you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord, my God, will come, and all the holy ones with him. So Christ is obviously referred to as the Lord, my God, there. And it will come about in that day that there will be no light. The luminaries will dwindle, just as it says in the darkness for the kingdom of the Antichrist. For it will be a unique day, which is known, uh, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But it will come about that at the evening time there will be light, and it will come about in that day that living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea and half the other half toward the western sea will be in summer as well as in winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth and that day the Lord will be the only one and his name the only one. And you look down at verse 12, a passage we read a little earlier. Now this will be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet, and their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongue will rot in their mouth. Uh, then also uh, Daniel chapter 9. Yeah, exactly. Was that? There's a scene in Ravens of the Lost Ark when they open up the ark and they're inside the post and they show the Nazis. Yeah. And there's eyes on the skull. And there's this. Some truth to that in the scriptures as far as the, uh, what was it, when the Philistines stole the ark and stuff and they're dropping dead like flies. Uh, Daniel, Daniel 9, 36 to, oh no, there aren't that many verses in Daniel 9. <laughs> we are hurting here. Uh, I wonder if it's Daniel. at the end of Bible. I wonder if Daniel, not even can be Daniel 7. I don't know what's going on here. I wonder if it's well, not the 70 weeks. Oh, it might be the uh, 
Daniel, yeah, this is what it would be. Daniel 11. Daniel 11. I was out of spirit when I did this particular. <laughs> It's not inspired by most of all of God. We could have uh, rewind the tape and just cover it. Yeah, that's right. And that way I could retain my infallibility. <laughs> and, uh, okay, Daniel 11, verses 36 to 45. Uh, uh, I would say even more specifically, verses 40 to 45, we talk about... And even this, though, too, the... the, the the king of the north here is usually referred to as Russia, and that's false. It's the king of the king of the south, and the king of the north throughout Daniel chapter eleven is uh, uh, the king of the north would be northern uh, uh, northern coalition uh, of nations that would uh, would probably be headed by. Persia or something along those lines. Uh, the king of the south would be uh, Egypt uh, and the, the Arabs of northern Africa. Uh, and so uh, these are basically the, the, the battles between the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. So we've got to go with the general geography of where they are. So uh, the Russian invasion of uh, Russia with some of the uh, allies that used to be part of the Soviet Union and are now uh, uh, basically Muslim nations, you'll find justification for that in, in uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, but right now, the king of the south, the king of the north, would be a southern coalition of Arab nations and a northern coalition of Arab nations. And at, that, uh, and at the end time, in verse 40, the king of the south will collide with him and the king of the north will storm against him with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships, and he will enter countries overflow them and pass through. He will also enter the beautiful land, that's, that's to Israel, and many countries will fall, uh, but these will be rescued out of his hand, Edom, Moab, and the foremost of the sons of Adam. Uh, then he will stretch out his hand against other countries, and the land of Egypt will not escape. And he will gain control over the hidden treasures of gold and silver, and over the precious things of Egypt, and, and Libyans and Ethiopians will follow at his heels. But rumors from the east, that might be the kings of the east, and from the north, so that's further north than the king of the north, which might be Russia, will disturb him. And he will go forth with great wrath to destroy and annihilate many. And he will pitch the tents of his royal pavilion between the seas, and a beautiful holy mountain, and he will, uh, then he will come to his end, and no one will help him. Now, some people slip somewhere in here, the Antichrist, and uh, others don't. It's real tough to handle this passage. Uh, the king of the north, though, he breaks every exegetical rule to make that Russia. Um, but whatever the case. Part of that scenario, the end time scenario, is in there and uh, needs to be looked into. Uh, but the battle of Armageddon, uh, spoken about here in Revelation 16, uh, under the sixth bowl. Christ warns of his return. He comes like a thief suddenly and unexpected. Uh, blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his garments. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. Some interesting things are mentioned there about keeping awake and uh, being aware of the signs of the times. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Now as to the time and the epochs, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, thinking that the Antichrist is going to be some kind of Gorbachev type guy or everything, all these guys are going to bring in peace when he's going to be even more ruthless than Gorbachev. Uh, while they are saying peace and safety, that destruction will come upon them suddenly like birth pains upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and, and sober. Uh, for those who sleep do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. 
But since we are of the day, let us be sober, have enough, put on the breastplate of faith, faith and love, and have the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God is not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's wrath, I see, is falling after the tribulation period. Believers will be protected from that, but that means that we're going to be here for the tribulation period. I'm not a free shriver. Uh, but if the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief, suddenly and unexpectedly, to those who don't believe in Christ and to those who are not aware of the signs of the times. Those who recognize the signs of the signs of the times, uh, the prophecies that Christ gave us in Matthew 24 and in the book of Revelation, they will be able to see uh, that Christ's coming is getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, the Mark of the Beast, the book written by the Lalan brothers, they give you a list. There was like every earthquake was 6.5 or greater from the 1890s on. You know, you're lucky if you had two or three in a decade uh, for the first four or five decades, and then all of a sudden they started to become a little bit more frequent, and now it's not uncommon to get like you know 30 or 40 in just a few years, just a couple of years' time. So earthquakes are getting more, uh, more and more frequent as we draw closer to the second coming of Christ. Uh, but blessed is the one who stays awake, those who recognize the signs of the times, and blessed is the one who keeps his garments. Uh, remember in Genesis 3 when men fell, Adam and Eve fell in the garden, they covered themselves with fig leaves, God had to cover them. They were, were ashamed of who we are before God, uh, but then uh, uh, we need to be clothed. Uh, you know, Isaiah tells us that all our righteousness is filthy rags before the Lord, uh, and Second uh, Corinthians 5 21 tells us that God made Jesus who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God and then Jesus Christ uh, is our righteousness uh, Jesus Christ uh, covers our uh, nakedness and as we're clothed with Christ's righteousness uh, the seventh ball is mentioned in verses 17 to 21 of Revelation chapter 16. So look at verses 17 to 21. And the seventh angel poured out his bowl upon the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder, and there was a great earthquake, such as there had not been since man came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it, and so mighty. And the great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And Babylon the great was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of his fierce wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And huge hailstones, about 100 pounds each, came down from heaven upon men, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, because his plague was extremely severe. <laughs> Yeah. So the the seventh bowl poured out into the air, and with this plague, the end of the age has come. Christ reign uh, immediately follows. There's flashes of lightning, sounds and peals of thunder, and the most devastating earthquake of all time. Greater. Uh, greater than the separation of the continents uh, that caused uh, at the end of the flood. So, uh, uh, tremendously devastating, tremendous devastating earthquake. Uh, the great city split into three parts. Jerusalem is the great city, which refers to the great city in Revelation 11, verse 8. And the cities of the nations fell. The Gentile, great Gentile cities fall as well. Babylon the great. Uh, receives God's wrath. Uh, Babylon the Great is probably Rome. Some speculate that it's, it may be a rebuilt Babylon. Uh, old uh, Saddam Hussein over there in Iraq thinks that he's the reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar is trying to rebuild Babylon. But, but uh, uh, the, it, it seems that Babylon... By the time John was writing Babylon was the code name for Rome that Christians used both here 
and in I believe Second Peter as well. And uh, Babylon is also referred to the city that sits on seven hills in Revelation 17, and uh, and uh, that is the name uh, Revelation 17 verse 9. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. That's that's a description of Rome, not uh, not Babylon. So uh, Babylon the Great, which receives God's bread, is probably Rome. Uh, every island flees away. Uh, every island fled away. So uh, you've got islands just dropping down into the into the ocean. Mountains were not found, and then you have a hundred pound hailstone, which is kind of like cinder blocks falling out of the sky. Uh, but men continued to blaspheme God. Still, they did not repent. Now, when you look at the sixth seal and the seventh seal, and you put them together, and you look at the sixth and the seventh trumpet, and uh, Christ's return in Revelation 19, you put all these things together with the seventh bowl, and you have a basic description of, of the same events. The lightning, the thunder, the hailstones, the earthquake, uh, the second coming of Christ and so all speak of the end of the tribulation period and uh, Christ's return uh, take a look at Second Peter chapter 3 Second Peter chapter 3 starting with verse 3 Knowing this, first of all, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. When they maintained this, it escaped their notice that by the word of God the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But the present heavens and earth, by his word, are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with the roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burnt up. Uh, and so it talks on that we should live godly lives because we live in a day and age when men are mocking and saying where is the sign of Christ's return? Uh, but the fact is Jesus Christ is not through with this planet. He will return and this should affect the way that we live. We should trust in Him for salvation. We should trust in Him for guidance of daily living. And we should allow Him to change us uh, from within. Because Jesus Christ is the only escape from uh, God's wrath which will fall upon this planet uh, in the last days. Now, next week what we'll be doing is we're going to be covering, we're going to close this lecture a little early that we've completed 16 lectures and we've completed 16 chapters so we might we might be able to as long as we can knock off one chapter per lecture from here on in we might get the whole course of Revelation done in 22 lectures instead of 24 which would be really good and we just start history of philosophy there's three well I'll talk about that after off the table cut the cassette that not everybody looks on our cassette because we need to hear all this uh but in Revelation 17 and 18, we have the destruction of uh, Babylon. Uh, there's different views there. Some hold that uh, Revelation 17 is the destruction of ecclesiastical Babylon, the destruction of the end time false church, and then chapter 18 is the destruction of Babylon, the political Babylon, the end time world government. Uh, but I see them as so intertwined, uh, even their, their, their destruction seems to be described in the same event. So we'll talk about the possibility that it could be 
two different Babylons talked about here, the religious Babylon and the, then the political Babylon. And at the same time, I tend to think that they're just both rolled up and uh, they're both one of the same. So that's it for Revelation 16. We'll pick it up next week for Revelation chapter 17.